I had to restart my phone. You had to restart it? All right, so are we just starting from the top or are we keeping the blooper? I'm guessing we're starting from the top. All right, here we go. Take 1,003. So, just a fun fact, Devin glitched out the audio once uh, because he wanted to know when Hulu was came out, which was 2007. Um, just, just to recap, um, we, the movie is Iron Man 2, which came out in 2010. Um, Captain America, the first Avenger, came out in 2011. So did Thor. Uh, it also came out in 2011. Boom. Mic drop. I swear I should leave this episode off after I say that. <laughs> no, dude, I'm not going to do that. We haven't even reviewed the mute movie. Well, thanks to me, we finally said the movie. Boom. Iron Man 2, here we go. What are we talking about first? Okay. So, do you know what's always bothered me about this movie? What's always bothered you? How did America is run so capitalistically that they're so upset that this that the main provider of weapons is just like, yeah, I got this really cool weapon um, toy, but um, you can't have it. And but you can have all these other missiles and stuff. And they're like, fuck that shit. We're taking you to court. Yeah, that's a that's a good first part of the movie. I hate that. I thought it was so stupid when I watched it the first time. I didn't when I first watched this movie. I didn't know what was going on. I thought he was going to jail for being Iron Man. I was like, oh no. I was like, well, what the crap? I mean, I great you're Iron Man, but I mean, seriously, you you fought one giant robot. You did some stuff in the against the Taliban, and then, woohoo, you're kind of a superhero. <laughs> Take down the Taliban, woohoo, you're kind of a superhero. And the military's like, we're mad you did our job, and we're gonna take that suit, because we're the government, and that slimy little bitch that, I'm gonna be honest with you, when I saw, when I got a rumor of Hydra was going to be in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, that little slimy motherfucker. You um, talking about Justin Hammer? No, not that guy. Not that slimy little motherfucker. The other one. Um, I already knew Justin Hammer was slimy. No, oh, the guy that hired Whiplash? No, that is also Justin Hammer. The older, yeah, the older, hold on, I know who you're talking about, the slimy older guy. Yeah, the, the politician one. There we go, okay, thank you. Um, I, I knew he was going to be Hydra the moment they, they mentioned Hydra was going to be in the MCU, and I was like, yeah, that, that's, that's going to be him. I knew it. Slimy motherfucker. He looks like he oozes bacon grease. <laughs> He looks more white and whipped than cream cheese. <laughs> I like this. I like this podcast episode so far. I like where this is going. Well, the, the little little mousy man is just like that. And then you got freaking Justin Hammer. And if you've ever read a comic, you're like, oh, fuck, Justin Hammer. Uh, you see, I didn't know. See, I'm not the... the only time, you know, growing up, only time I ever saw Iron Man was in the Avengers. So I didn't really know who the rogue gallery or whatever you want to call it oh no they're just synonymous with like the hammer tech is, is just synonymous is like oh yeah we're like a weapons company we're like the avengers or shield but better and then they're fucking not they're, they're doing, fucking trash they're doing, no they're doing like shady ass shit that makes um the shield look like nuns <laughs> the shield look like nuns yeah and then Justin Hammer is like the embodiment of the little bitch boy you meet in a fraternity and it's like talking like big game and then can't like represent, you know? Um, yeah. 
like he he doesn't show up to the fight out back. Um, like he, the moment the fight starts going on, he starts backing down. Like I, 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 I was kidding. I was kidding. I promise. I promise. And his tech is like the embodiment of that. And I honestly thought Justin Hammer was gonna appear in WandaVision with that scene when she's taking that little little buggy thing through. I thought they were about to call in Hammer Tech and I was like, this thing's gonna bust going through this this dimension but dimensional rift thing. And Killer. It's gonna be Hammer Tech and they're like, Oh yeah, bro, it was Hammer Tech. Hammer Tech broke. But no, like he, he's like the embodiment of like so, somebody you don't trust and daddy's money at the same time. Oh yeah, well he kind of did act like daddy's money. Yeah. He was he's basically like I want Tony Stark's armor now. Well, 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 why can't I figure it out, bitch? If you don't get out my screen. I don't like Justin Hammer neither, just because he's annoying. I know, I know. And then you get and the, the go ahead. Here's, my, here's my greatest question. I don't know if we're going out of order here, but how the hell did his ass create warp machine? What are you talking about? Yeah, didn't he create War Machine's armor? No, I don't do it. They stole it. Right. We'll get to that. Okay. Um, but no, like, he basically, like, instead of, instead of, like, the whole drunk scene situation, like, in the comics, Tony Stark is dying because palladium poisoning or something like that because the arc reactor. The arc reactor that I put in my chest is killing me. Oh, no. Who didn't see that one coming? He even though he had the funds to like get it removed before, but that Go whole thing, that whole thing was just so stupid in my opinion because it's like, hmm, I can do that. Got the money. I got top six. Bad pocket. I'm fucking Iron Man. So he doesn't, and then he starts getting sick, and then it's, it's, it's I don't know if it's. They go, he went past one no return or there was no procedure yet even though they talk like there is a procedure and he just doesn't want to because he wants to remember what happened, what happened? he didn't remove the arc reactor right they, they just cured him yeah they just cured him right no because he discovered the new element and that cured him because of his dad discovering it but in Iron Man 3 I need to rewatch Iron Man 3 what was their thing with that because was it still in his chest that- a completely different thing. Um, they got removed in Iron Man 3. Um, he, he took it out and then it did an effect. I need to rewatch Iron Man 3 and um, I'm yeah, trying. It's on the list, but the he, he creates a new element, which highlight it really did highlight the genius of Tony Stark making his own element. Um, I actually saw a, a theory that 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 element like created a sent a ripple through space you know like oh this guy um made him infamous like throughout space like all that jazz and like this this is kind of how he fast-tracked making nanotech and how um some people think that that's how thanos figured out who he was and uh infinity workers are like oh man he's, he's actually real but <laughs> oh man he's actually real but no like that that whole like play and thing like good 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 I I get why that that's interesting I I get all that but I'm gonna be honest with you there there's like a bunch of discourse on what he created because I could have sworn it was palladium or some something like palladium or something like that and then and then uh. But in the comics, it was synthetic vibranium or vibranium. And then, in, like, it, it, just, it got weird for a while on um, what he created technically, but it, it's really powerful. But it, it did fast track nanotech, and you see that in Iron Man, really. 
um, when he's like toying around with the suits to that capacity. But what else? Um, like that, that whole thing, I I get, but like the fact that he's like so on edge about like I gotta I gotta sell everything for when I die. <laughs> gotta keep drinking this green juice going to be crazy for a little bit because I'm dying and I'm going through the stages. For real, he wants to get my dying house party. Everybody's like, Tony, Tony. And he goes, everybody ask me how I pee in this suit. Ah, there's your answer. Ah, I'm like, oh, hell. Then, uh, wrote, oh my god, I can't say his name right. Rody. Oh, thank god, I was about to say, Rody's like, takes the silver suit, he's like, Tony, I've had enough. Take off the suit, or I'm gonna blast your ass. And then they, they get in the whole fight, and then he kicks his ass, and then... Literally. And then Rhodey flies off to the military base, and then they just gear... They just rack up that, that bitch with a, a bunch of different... With a new paint job, a bunch of different tech. And then they get the whole scene with Justin Hammer giving him, like, weapons... <laughs> he says, I'm bringing out the tiny hammer. Pew! What? The little missile, the tiny hammer. The ex-wife? Oh, it was the ex-wife. I always, call, I always thought it was tiny hammer. No. Oh. Uh, the ex-wife. Pew! 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 Like a damn firecracker. It, it was like that scene in Hot Rod. Which scene? When they set off fireworks. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what I thought you meant. <laughs> I just find it funny. He said the ex-wife. Like, he, he hyped up all this stuff and, like, talked hardly any of this. words and like, huh, oh, hammer tech. Hmm. But, yeah. <laughs> Should've stuck the tech. What? Should've stuck the tar- Stark tech. Well, that was the thing. They were having issues with Stark because they just got in a huge fight, Devin. Well, wait. In the movies, though, he has to upgrade his suit to Stark Tech, right? Yeah, later on. Thank God. And in, in three, I mean, you're jumping the gun, though. And you're. Did you watch the movie or are you just guessing? No, I just, I watched the movie. Mm. You're missing I, a lot of details, my guy. I'm just missing the part. I'm just missing the part where... I'm jumping ahead of Iron Man 3 for some reason because, like, all these movies are... I've watched these movies so many times, my brain's, like, getting ahead. Yeah, yeah mine mine aren't running them all together. All right, we're going to take a brief, uh, a brief ad break, though. All right. I don't imagine this being a long episode. That's fine. Okay. All right. So, um, you, you got in the movie where they they got that great fight scene. This is this is when uh, the fight scene started ramping up in the MCU and started, you know, they started playing around. Which scene? Which one? The end fight scene. Oh, the me- okay, yeah, the movie super showdown with all the androids, and they're just blasting bullets and doing the whole team thing, and they're like tag team move, tag team move. And just hits him with a death laser, dude. It was epic. Yeah. Um, I I think I think that's when things started like really started like oh yeah the MCU is a thing. Let let's start going. And then you get Thor and um, uh, Captain America next year, and then those were really good. And then that MCU as a multiverse starts ramping up. Yeah, but that shit just hit the start of hitting the fan, and then here we are today. Yep. And then, um, there, there's, can I, can I say some continuity issues I had with this movie? Go ahead. There's no way Whiplash knew he was going to be racing. Like, even, even if he figured out, like, he was a bit manic, I don't think he could predict that exactly. How so? I think there was an ad. I mean, I think he just knew the event and he just went anyways. And well, it yeah, was he, he had Stark there. He knew that Stark was going to be there, but I there was no way he was going to be knew he was going to be racing. So 
the pit crew just seemed like a little bit too on the nose. Hmm. That is a good point. I'm not going to lie, that is a pretty cool suit. The red and silver? Dude, that, that was one of the best um, uh, suit-ups that we, we started to really get. Because we started to get like a variety with the nanotech. Yeah. In, uh, say something? Yeah. Okay, you were glitching. But yeah, we uh, started from like... I, Devin, are you saying something or are you just saying yes? No, I was about to say something, but you go ahead. Okay. But you, you start getting the like variations more, especially from uh, Iron Man 3 and then we get the nanotech further on in like the Avengers series but th- th- this is where we see like him learning from his past mistakes and all that because you'll notice like uh, e- each new suit comes with a different thing you get a parachute for Rhodey um, on uh, the Iron Spider suit you get uh, the beam beam one for the final fight in Endgame for when he got struck by lightning from Thor. Um, he's got shields. He's got knives or swords. He's got um, increased boosters to reach people at higher speeds. Um, he's got sonic cannons. He, he's really stepped up his game by the end of it. And you can definitely start, see this starting to like mound up to where he's getting there, especially towards the cusp of uh, Iron Man 3. Oh, yeah, because even in Avenger Endgames, he had that watch on him, or the, um... Yeah. He had the watch. Well, he's even a Winter Soldier. He's even had that watch ready. Oh, I'm thinking of Civil War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because oh, okay. it's when they bring Lord Bucky back, and he jumps up, uh, Bucky pulls the gun on him, and he grabs the muzzle of the gun with, with the hand, and Bucky fires and you can just see the shock in like, Tony Stark's face where he's like oh good it works I wasn't sure about that I was thinking of the scene in Avengers where um, Loki throws him off the roof and he's like come on come on come on and it's like he taps his wrist and it's yeah, like yeah. the yeah. sensors have to connect with the suit yeah 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 because um, in Iron Man 3 he does the nanotech so he can just summon it yeah, and then like, yeah, that's, I, I agree with you. That's like, that's one thing. That's like, Tony, like I said earlier about these character developments, Iron Man, Tony Stark has the probably another good one. He has good character development, but still with the arrogance and I, I and pompous, like, douchebag character he has, I don't get how he's as likable as he is. Because he learns from his mistakes after every movie. Well, maybe not in game, but you get the idea. Not necessarily, though. He's hyper vigilant to the point where it endangers other people, and then he still shoots off his mouth to the point where it endangers other people. And if we're still going off the assumption that Vulture is a Tony Stark villain in the MCU itself, then then it's still irresponsible on irresponsibility on. Iron Man's part because of that. I mean, yes, this Tony Stark in the MCU is so much more mature than the comic books. Um, but but still, you you got to be you, you still got to take into account how his actions and words affect things. Yeah, you you see more of that in uh, Iron Man three though. True, and this one it was more of oh hey I'm Iron Man, and you know the consequences of his actions kind of creep up on him. Yeah. And then you know he's still being arrogant. He's like oh I'm dying, so I'm gonna go eat donuts while Nick Fury tries to recruit me. But no, um, speaking of like Spider Man for a minute, do you know what this movie made me want? A Spider Man and Iron Man team up? No, no, no. A Spider Man movie where he's fighting some like Iron Man villains, like tech on par with Iron Man, like an Iron War, something like that. Because, like, Whiplash would be an interesting character to see Peter Parker Spider-Man try to combat. Like, he, he's he's quick on his feet, he's super smart. I 
I think I'd be very interested to see how he would tack, tack a villain like this. Um, he definitely could. I guarantee Ned probably would be involved or MJ, but I, I would definitely like to see something like that happen with a similar villain. That's not a bad idea. I mean, he's... But the way the MCU has Spider-Man set up like an... Like an Iron Man Jr. kind of... I mean... Not, kind of. I, see, you, I don't completely agree with that, but I can see where there are variations, because obviously it's the MCU. This is a different interpretation. Um, but I do see that at some point, because they... From the way I saw it, they were trying to set up Parker Industries. Yeah. But not have the name be Parker Industries. Um, I I was under the assumption that, okay, this kid is good enough. He's smart enough that w- once he gets old enough, like in the comic books, like Captain America and, the, and Iron Man agreed that uh, he'd be a better superhero than both of them uh, once he got older. And I, I think the MCU is setting up for something like that. But I, I think we're going to get a three-part movie, and then we're going to do an Iron Man level thing where, you know, Hulk or somebody like that's going to take the front seat. Hulk, Black Panther, and um, maybe Doctor Strange or Wanda will take, like, the front seat. The three front seats and then you got after like the third movie for Peter he's gonna pull an Iron Man and just be in the background and you're gonna see his development and you're gonna see like at full force by the end of this arc and then I think we're also gonna see um Hulk come into his own in some capacity in this phase of Marvel do you think he's gonna get his own standalone movie? I kind of want another Hulk. I want a Mark Luff- Mark Ruffalo standalone movie. Well, you say that, but sorry, they it's been in the work for a while. Oh, but hashtag like, She Hulk. Well, not She Hulk. I like it, Hulk movie, but I don't know what happens. Um, it was it was in the works, and then I don't know what happens, but. You know how I keep up with stuff, and I send you all that stuff, and you never read it. But no, anyways, what did you think about Whiplash's motivation? I I think he had better motivations than Loki and Thor, but I, I don't think he had the best. It seemed like a great opening for, you've wronged my family. You'll feel die. I, I think that's a great opening for that. But I do I do understand how yeah, we made this reactor attack re- reactor attack, but uh, we didn't end up doing anything with it. And then all of a sudden Tony Stark is like, Hey, I've got this idea of it worked. Um, I'm gonna run with this bitch. Like obviously th- there's not a lot that he would know about it um like head on so yeah he knows his family has a patent but i i get the motivation like you let my father die i get that but i think it was kind of weak i think it was starting off iron man villains if that makes sense yeah like it was ranting up trying to get into the unit yeah trying to Trying to open up his rogue gallery of villains. Yeah. Um. You know, we, we've talked a lot about what if. Do you know what I would really like to see? What? And th- this movie only, like, made me think of it more. Like, a uh, what if version where Tony Stark or Hank Pym became Star-Lord. And they were exposed to all that tech. And they're still, you know how they are. They're exposed to all this alien tech. And I... I just really want to see what they come up with, like, to advance that alien tech even further. Who knows, man? Maybe we'll see it next season, the what if. Maybe. Um, but can I... I've got a weird comment, and I, I realize how weird it is. 
but the cinematic beauty of that donut scene where he's sitting in the donut is a little too good i know they use like they were testing out uh drones when doing it because they're like oh this is new tech let's let's try it but i i was surprised at how cinematically it, it was very well shot oh yeah drone views are beautiful yeah like it was very smooth how they did it all the transition with that it's very nice um that where he's just sitting in the donut like the cinematic scene where it pulls out was very nice and smooth but um you you are aware of the controversy with um mickey rookie who plays whiplash right i don't remember so basically he was upset that he wasn't getting enough for it and he wasn't uh set to become a bigger villain than he already was and he created a bunch of problems on set and a bunch of other stuff and basically he burned the bridge with marvel and claimed that marvel was the worst people he's ever worked with <laughs> but he's an idiot now i mean he's dead now in the marvel universe so i mean yeah but still i mean all right devin i'm out of notes are you yep i'm trying to think what do you think of uh black widow and her first appearance i originally didn't like it like um i thought it was too like okay so the co- the way that her costumes are they get less and less sexual as she progresses in the mcu and i appreciate that um because and, and in charlotte johansson was pushing for that as well because a lot of these fight scenes she she was filming were way too sexual um because they were just trying to get like i can't you know yeah no i agree with you like yeah she she's based on like the fin fatal like s thing but the the sexualization of her being like a dumb bimbo and then boom dangerous spy woman Whip that ass, boy. Dude, that's like the scene in the hallway where she's like, I gotta go to work. And she starts doing, like, piranha kicks and whips out her, um, her wrist guns and just... Is that... What's her wrist guns called? Uh, Widow's Bites. Yeah, her Widow Bite. I was like, dude, that's dope. Yeah, but, um... Dude, like then that. she freaking beat up Happy. I thought that was funny. She's like, I'll get in the ring. And Happy's all right. So you want to do this and this and this? And she just, boom. Yeah, that, bars it is. that that was the stereotypical like uh mansplaining and then obviously she knew more but she, more than she was letting on but um i think are you about ready to rate this movie oh uh, yeah we can rate it all right i'm gonna give it 5.5 out of 10 you're gonna give it a 5.5 out of 10 well i thought it was a good ramping up point but i i didn't see it as a good movie standalone wise I see. Um, I, I thought it was one of those movies where it was better than a sequel. I I think it's on par with the first one. I think it's on par with. I wouldn't say it's on par with the third one. It's better than the third one, but. God, yeah, I the third one. I'm kind of I'm torn between the third one. Like I, I was on the fence between somewhere between five and seven. Um, but I I, I really thought about it before writing out the description. I was like. I think 5.5 is a solid because it's not exceptionally in the MCU. Yeah, there's going to be a lot better, but there's a lot worse too. Um, yeah, there's some room for improvement. We're still working on it and getting our footing, but on, on it, it's just an average movie that you can rewatch. And, um, but I don't like how we don't acknowledge the mental health problems. Which kind of just brushed them under the rug. Which re- really decided on the factor of going down further than a 6 to, to 5.5. Huh. That's pretty deep. I mean, I'm going to give it a... See, I don't really hate this movie. I mean, I agree with you. It's not a bad standalone film by itself. I mean, compared to what we got now, 
Compared to what we got now, it's way better compared to it. Mm-hmm. But it's I don't hate this movie. I like the effects. I like the growth. I don't hate it, but I don't love it either, you know? Yeah, like, I don't hate it, and I don't love it. I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat with you, but I don't want to give it a 5.5, so I'm going to be in the middle and give it a 7. The only yeah. thing I, I hated was Justin Hammer was kind of annoying, but that was kind of the plot line, and then I didn't like how Rhodey was, how he just kind of beat it up on Iron Man, took his tech, but it was a great intro to War Machine. And well, then... You, you got to think from the perspective, you're covering so much for your friends with the government and then he's doing stupid shit like throwing a party and blowing stuff up and peeing in a suit and making like a big publicity stunt when he needs to be keeping a low profile mm. cause you know he, he's lashing out and you know R- Rhodey's pretty like justified in the fact that he's cu- he's putting so much on the line his, his entire work on the line and he he walk he walks up to see this, you know. Fair point. Like he, he sees his friend like like just basically taking a piss on all the hard work he's doing for his friend. I'm sorry, I was trying to find the list. Um, yeah, I mean that's true. I forgot. Yeah, I forgot about that. That he was standing up for Tony because the government wanted to throw him in jail. And, uh, and Ro- Rhodey's like, Nah, bro, hold up, wait a minute. Yeah. I mean, I can't really find anything bad about this movie, but like same time, it's not like, oh my gosh, let's watch Iron Man two. I'd rather watch like the Avengers or something. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. There, there's very little wrong with it, but it's not enough to like completely weigh it down. It, it's just kind of like floating there, like. A little above average you know yeah it's there it's like hey do i want to watch do i want to watch a good hero movie iron man too yeah but um next next sunday we're watching um frankenstein and the monster from hell from 1979 oh thank god i thought that one was next i thought so Devin, i already had it covered trust me okay good but um i believe we're we're about done so do you like to give your famous last words, Devin? I'm going to sit here and eat Burger King while you all take pictures of me. <laughs>